Hello, today I want to talk about a problem from the dynamics textbook written by Paul Mitigy. And it's a kinematics question. The big picture is, where is point Q in space? So here's the problem. We need to locate a microphone in three dimensions. A microphone Q is attached to three pegs, A, B, and C, by three cables. Knowing the peg locations and cable lengths, determine the distance between Q and point N naught. We have a diagram. We see points A, B, and C and our cables attached to it, as well as N naught in the floor. And we have a table of distances and lengths we can use to solve the problem. Now the problem tells us that the distance between N naught and Q is going to be 13.3 meters. But what's more important is knowing how to get there and showing our work. So before we dive in, let's talk about the context of this problem. This problem is actually very common in the real world. Anyone who's been to a sporting game in the past 15 years or so has seen these aerial cameras attached to the stadium. With four very long cables, a aerial stabilized camera is following the action live on the field at high speeds being controlled by an operator in a booth. Motion capture also answers the question, where is a point in space all the time? In the movie Avatar, the actors wore sets of harnesses that included reflective dots, as you can see on the head of the actor, as well as facial dots that allowed the um, film crew to translate the head and face motion of the actors and actresses directly into the avatars that were created by a computer. So now that we've discussed the context for this problem, Let's get back to the main concept. This problem, locating a point Q in space, is a geometry problem. And when you think geometry, you often think of creating sets of angles, which can be really challenging in three dimensions. What I want to show you today is that using position vectors to do geometry can not only save you a lot of time, but it can be easier to understand and it's the same amount of work when you deal with two-dimensional and three-dimensional problems. The first thing we need to do if we're going to use vectors is define a vector basis. I'm going to define a unitary right-handed orthogonal set of vectors, which I will call nx and y and z. And nx is going to go out to the right, and y will go up the page and NZ out along the wall between A and B. And now with my vector basis, I can turn some of the information from my identifier table into vector equations. So the distance from A to B, I'm going to write as the magnitude of the position vector from A to B, which is 20 meters. And I'll do the same for my other distances. Similarly, I can look at my lengths of the cables and write magnitude of A to Q is the same as the magnitude from Q to A, so start and end point doesn't matter, which is 15 meters, the magnitude of Q to B is 13 meters, and the magnitude from Q to C is 11 meters. So now that we've handled our known quantities, let's write a vector expression for our unknown quantity, which is the position vector from Q to N naught. We're gonna write that with three unknowns, X, Y, and Z, and we'll write that the position vector 2Q from N naught is x and x plus y and y plus z and z.
And now we're going to make use of our position vector equation, which you can see in equation one. What we really want to know, because we have the magnitude of R Q from A, but we don't have its direction, we need to write a magnitude equation that allows us to not need any directional information about Q and A, and that lets us skip needing to define angles. Instead, using our position vector formula, we can say that R Q from A is equal to R Q from N naught minus the position vector to A from N naught. And as we said, because we only have the magnitude of R Q from A, we'll take the magnitude of both sides and to avoid having to carry around a square root, we will square both sides. So now we can say that RQ from N naught minus RA from N naught is equal to RQ from N naught, which is X and X minus Y and Y, excuse me, plus Y and Y plus Z and Z. And we will subtract the position vector 2a from n naught. So we're going to go up 8 in the ny direction, and then we're going to go 20 in the nz direction. So this is minus 8ny plus 20nz. So we'll write this whole thing as x and x plus y minus 8 and y plus z minus 20 and z. And as you see from our bottom set of formulas that the square root of the magnitude is equal to the vector dotted with itself. So now we go back to our left hand side. The magnitude of r q from a was 15. So 15 squared will be 225 is equal to x squared plus y minus 8 squared plus z minus 20 squared. And this is one equation. It was one equation because even though we started with vectors, we took its magnitude, which gets a scalar product. So we have one equation but we still have three unknowns, x, y, and z. So r q from a is only one piece of known information we have. Our other two will come from the other cables. So I'll leave the solution to you, but the setup is much the same. r q from b is going to be r q from n naught minus r b from n naught. And here's our second equation. Our third equation uses C, R, Q from C is R, Q from N naught minus R, C from N naught. Next, I'm going to show you how to use motion genesis to solve a nonlinear set of equations. Now, the inputs to motion genesis can be written using any text editor software. Motion Genesis, to solve your problem, needs to know about the elements of your system. There could be rigid frames, rigid bodies, points, and particles. It also needs to know about your identifiers. What are the constants and variables needed to solve the problem? In our first line, we are creating a rigid frame n. When we create the rigid frame, we get a set of basis vectors, namely nx, ny, nz, and an origin point n naught that we can use to define any future position vectors. In our next line, we are creating points a, b, and c. In the parentheses, we put the letter n to indicate that these points are fixed in n. Next, we create a particle q, and then we define our constants for all of the distances along the wall and the length of our cable. 
and the last part of our setup, we create three variables x, y, z that represent the unknown measures of our position vector 2q from n0. In motion genesis, we can define the position of any point from any other point in our space. In line 15, we are creating the position vector 2b from n0. And that position vector is h, which we said for our problem setup is 8 meters in the ny direction. We can also set up the position 2a from b, which is ab in the positive nz direction. And lastly, we can set the position vector 2c from b using our constant bc. We can also write there are unknowns, which is the position of Q from N naught, which is X and X plus Y and Y plus Z and Z. Now, similar to many programs, motion genesis can solve a set of equations if they're written in the form F equals zero. So we have three equations and three unknowns to write in terms of F equals zero. The first one in line 22, we are asking for our quantity, which is the distance squared 2q from a, which is the length of our cable. When we write that equation, motion genesis will look through the position vectors we've defined to come up with a symbolic expression. So that distance squared from q to a is equal to the length of the cable squared. So by subtracting the length of the cable squared, we get one equation for f equals zero. We'll also do the same for the cables 2q from b and 2q from c. Last, we'll call the solve method. In the solve method, we first pass in our matrix zero, which is going to be equal to zero. And then we have to pass in three guesses for x, y, and z. Now your guesses are important, and it's always important to check what you get out to make sure that your answer is physically reasonable. But for our guesses, we're going to guess that x is half the wall length, b to z, y is half of h, and z is half of a to b. Once we do that, motion genesis will store numerical values for x, y, and z. And we will use the command evaluate to number that will turn the symbolic form of Q's position from N0, which we have up here in line 18, into a numerical value. Now that our script is finished, let's load Motion Genesis and call our script. We'll do that by calling run microphone3d.al, which is the name of our file. If we scroll through our output, we'll see all of our input lines that we typed, as well as output lines, which are indicated by the arrow. This says the position vector from n naught to b is h and y, just as we defined above. And we can see that when we called our solve method, we have it converged to two to the minus 14, which is very near zero. And we have x is equal to 9.1, y is 4.5 and z is 8.6. So when we call evaluate on our position vector from n naught to q, we get a distance of 13.3, just as we defined in our problem. So let's recap our problem. We are now able to locate point q in space, and we did it by using position vectors, which turned out to give us straightforward equations that we could use to locate a microphone in 3D. Thank you for listening.